Okay, so question eight is a little bit more interesting. It's a combination of memorize the formula and some uh, basic, I'm sorry, basic is, well, intuitive problem solving. Uh, well, problem solving, really. When we say problem solving, it's gonna be a very, um, it's a multifaceted word. It, uh, it's, a, I, you know, it's a word I love along with uh, mathematical maturity. Um, it's uh, one of those things where uh, when you have mathematical maturity, you can recognize mathematical maturity when you see it. And it's the same deal with the problem solving skill. When you develop it, you will recognize when you need it, even you will recognize when other people are exercising it. But it's very difficult to nail down what problem solving skill means. Um, but okay, this is a question where you have to exercise that problem solving skill. And in fact, this hint will try to give you a little bit of guidance since most of you are still in the process of developing skills still. So do look at the hint. Um, hints usually try to help. Now, the thing that you do have to memorize is that formula again, that wave speed for wave on a string is given by square root of tension per uh, linear mass density. So you are given the linear mass density of the two strings. Uh, you are told that they have the same tension, T. So you have to write out, oh, my wave speed here is the square root of T over mu one and my wave speed here is also square root of t over mu two, and it's two different speeds. I, uh, although I'm not going to do it myself, I recommend that you work out the numbers and actually have numerical value, because um, there's no, the analytical expression here don't really simplify anyway. The numerical value will give you something easier to work with for the next stage in the problem solving. So, for the next stage in problem solving, it helps to visualize. So this picture kind of tries to help you, you know, imagine a wave being generated from this end and uh, you have to imagine this is a little bump that's traveling to the right. That's what all the arrows are trying to give you visualization for. And at the same time, I think, yeah, generated simultaneously. At the same time, there's another wave coming from here, here, so you might even be talking about the, the position x1 of the, um, of the pulse as a function of time and x2 as a function of time. And um, you know that at, uh, x1 at time equals zero is, uh, let's call the left hand x equals zero, so zero. And yeah, we are given the distance here. Let me label this D. So uh, for X2, at time equals zero is D. It's a starting from right. And um, in order to figure out how much time passes, uh, how much time passes before the pulses pass one another, uh, you need to have a, a uh, mathematical expression for this positions of the pulses. And um, uh, important part of problem solving is parsing the problem text, like when it says the pulses pass one another, what it really means is par pulses overlap. And when we say they overlap, what we really mean is X of one at that particular time, let me call that T, uh, T final, is equal to the x of two at the same time. That's when the two pulses occupy the same position in space. So looking at this as the end goal that you are trying to reach, then what you should do is, um, so we know, oops, maybe I shouldn't have chosen D, that's so confusing with a zero. <laughs> so starting out with these initial conditions, you have to actually write them down as a, a, a function of time, and this is where your um, your problem solving skill comes in because there's no formula that tells you what that expression should be, only your intuitive sense of problem solving. You go through some um, candidate expressions like this exposition, well, it's describing the distance from left, so it should be the wave speed times the time. 
and you double check that this fits these initial conditions and that this makes sense uh, in your head and then good, good to go. <laughs> uh, same thing with the X or similar thing with the X2. You recognize that at time equals zero, you are starting out from D, so you should start out from D. And then the position is actually decreasing. As time goes, it's going to be minus VW2 times the same time T. Um, and, you know, go through this and kind of make sure that it makes sense. Then once you have these expressions, then what you can now do is uh, recognize that this expression here means, uh, oh, the, the top expression V W1 times T is equal to D minus V W2 times T at this uh, particular time that I'm li labeling as TF. And that's the time that they're looking for. So solve this expression for TF, plug in the numbers, make sure you are giving your answer in unit of milliseconds, you should be good to go. So uh, I hope you, as you're going through a question like this that you recognize that um, there isn't much that you would be looking up from your textbook. Like the one thing you would be looking up is this formula for the wave speed. That's one piece of physics knowledge you need. Um, a lot of everything else that you're doing here, I hope it's uh, beginning to feel like a kinematics again, where it's uh, a lot of it is on your developed problem solving skill rather than looking up a formula or even procedure like a standard strategy from the book. It's about you understanding the question and working it through. It's challenging, it takes practice. Um, that's why we give you this homework question so that you can practice.